what is it about the C chord on that guitar? Uh, well, mean, it's just those whatever frequencies are doing to like lop on top of each other when you get the fifths and the. When I pick up that guitar, that's the first chord I play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and that's akin to me like. yesterday he was playing his old Martin and I said how do you get the high notes on the high E string when you're playing a solo to be so fat sounding because when I play it it sounds like a guy from Alice in Chains trying to play acoustic watch his hand look what he's doing his arm it's all when you rest up here you get freedom down here Sad songs coming up. Knowing me, I will have one of these by the end of the day. <laughs> you had one, right? You just sold it, right? I'm gonna go to the mall. <laughs> J50 Mall. Yeah. Well, you sound amazing, huh? I bet you do. Damn. Yeah, these are so good. It makes me regret. I had one of these that was in the flood. Got, I don't know, just didn't quite have it. I should have just replaced it. Yeah. I was in Groons, you know, and I was just waiting to go to the bathroom, and I just randomly just picked it off the wall with, you know, I was waiting waiting for somebody to come back downstairs, and, and uh, I was playing one chord on it, and I played a G chord. I was like, Jesus, it's a lot. One of my favorite singers of all time. That's a good chord. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I was going to ask you one more question? Yeah. When I watched all of you bluegrass monsters, um, but I was just proud of that, the way I just went right, got it right, <laughs> went right up. Right back. Anytime I do that, I'm like, yeah, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> or. Right to like, it. Yeah. See, I, I got it in my head now. Sorry, go ahead. It's going to be a good day. You were um, saying. Well, I've been watching all these videos of like, like amazing bluegrass players all in a circle. And when it's their time to play a solo, they got to go from zero to a hundred in about. 0.1 seconds, right? What's the mindset for you right when you're about to launch in a solo around some badass cats? Uh, me, me personally, I mean, it's all about tension management. It's, it gets into that athletic side without trying to be too much in the head, just trying to, even when you're playing rhythm, not being too aggressive with it. You know, like better, the better drummers you see, like they don't move. Like Shannon Forrest, that's one yeah. of the lessons from him is that you can just, and Steve Gadd, they're just like, there's so much sound and dynamic control and power. It's not like, not to bash this thing. Yeah, so it really starts in the rhythm where you don't need to. Economy. Yeah, like you've got to have stuff in your tank. Play that Tony Rice rhythm you were showing me yesterday, the way he str strummed that. That stuff? When you do the strange rhythm. Yeah. 
Brasil. Yeah. The basic move, and it's I don't I don't sound near like he does, uh, but it's like boom, chuck, uh, boom. Three three down strokes and then it up. Three down. Yeah. Uh, one down oh, yeah. which comes from that Clarence White thing yeah favorite Tony White Tony Rice lick of all time your personal boy so many right there's one that I can't play Chris Elders plays it it's on the intro to Spanish Point on the Bela Flex uh, Bluegrass Sessions record it's actually a Jerry Reed cop uh, something like that where he kind of starts out here and brings the whole thing in <laughs> wow Wow. B7. I mean, that's like him doing his out thing. I mean, as far as like most of his. Uh, Good morning. Hi, Jim Blade. I mean, it's just uh, we're all fans of the. Because uh, uh, when I was really starting to see him live in 1989, he would play kind of a real similar solo on Nine Pound Hammer. Uh, uh, one take that B flat and spin that's on the me and my guitar all that's on me and my guitar <laughs> and one of the things I would always uh, uh, there's an old Kenny Baker Bill Monroe mandolin lick that he puts in Mule Skinner Blues mm. that's just uh, that's nasty that real slow that's a good one that's out of the b minor b minor damn you know i never really studied him enough to like get everything note for note uh a lot, Tony? He played a ton, yeah. Did he? Kid, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he moved, uh, he was so into the music when he moved out to California, like 77 with David Grisman. I mean, yeah. Those guys played, you know, eight hours a day. Yeah. Just writing songs and jamming. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing today, Mr. Bass Genius? Put, put you right on the. Uh, how good is this guy? How good is that guy? You see him? It's, it does, it does not get better. As they say, as a player and as a human being, he's a good boy. Yeah, yes, that's tea. What kind of tea you like? I think it's got some uh, tree bark and mushrooms in it. You smell good today. Did you put some nice cologne on or something? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah you smell good. Show us. Uh, how you choose which P bass you're gonna play on a song? Show us. Show us. You ask. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's an old joke between me and Jim. Yeah, I got him out of But boy, your bass collection is way diverse these days. Golly, I know it. Jim used to show up at a session with seven P basses of all different colors. Remember those days? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Different amounts of mid range. Right. Different amounts of mid range. Yeah. Uh, of all these five basses, which one do you play the most? Man, it would be this guy, I guess. Yep. You Which you that. sold me. Yeah. Came into my shop in the yeah. old days. Yeah. That's it. Rock and roll relics. It's, it's just got a little more of the beefy part of mid-range. Yeah. Like this one over here. Uh, is, I've used it a lot through the years, but it, it's got more upper mids that cuts through a track awesomely. But What's a man have to play through there to get a job here in this oh, town? Oh, God. And how long you had all this shit? Yeah, <laughs> a long time. Uh, sweet Justin Meebank turned me on to the the distressor and the knee there. Yeah. Basically, I never EQ. I just go through them yeah. and then go through the 1176. Nice. That's about it. And you used that red box for a long time. Yeah, Joey Moe. Sweet Joey. He loves that. He bought it. He bought it for you? Gave it to me for Christmas. Oh. It was his way of saying, don't show up without it. I got you. I got you. <laughs>
I got you. I got oh, you. God. Thanks for the tour. That was quite oh, I love you, man. Back to the guy. The man. <laughs> The other kind of secret bluegrass sauce is not using that all the time. It kind of waters it down, muddies it. Yeah. Leaves your fifth, fifth yeah. clean now. Yeah. Yes, on the top one. Does that sound good? So good. Yeah. Yeah. The low end is like those crooners from the 40s, you know? Yeah. It's just like, it sounds like a... What is Fred Astaire or something on a, on a or whoever it was on, a, on an old ribbon mic? Like. So good. Yeah, man. It chokes out real bad on the bass strings up high. Yeah. What kind of strings do you think those are? That's what was on it when I bought it. Gauge. You still use 13? Me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Almost everything. Yeah. That was a good thing. Beautiful. Damn. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Love you, Tommy. Bear. All right, buddy. Bye -bye. Uncle Larry.